this way. Uh, William Collins WC SK Part 2. Now previously I talked about some of the theory behind the creation of the knife. Now I want to talk about the design features incorporated into the knife. Now I mentioned that the knife was 377 grams, it's wrong, it's actually 382 grams. Um, now starting pommel, it's got an extended tang with um, sort of a hidden, hidden lanyard hole. That's um, quite characteristic of William Collins knives, but the extended tang isn't. Um, the idea behind the extended tang is that it can be used in a couple of ways. First, it can be used to crash nuts and things. Second, it can be used to take the force if you're having to drive the knife into something. So rather than smack on the handle scales, which could come off, um, instead you smack on the extended tang, which will help go through or into the wood without damaging or risking damaging the handle. Finally, it can be used for scraping. So holding out of the way and it can be used to scrape things out so if you start to make a spoon or a bowl or something the extended tang can be used to help scrape that out then we come into the handle I mentioned previously the lanyard loop and the idea behind that is being something that you can add momentum to in striking without the risk of it coming off um, the handle is also uh, very much a William Collins design. It's very, very comfortable. Um, this handle is actually different from what comes standard as the WCSK. Um, I opted for this. The standard handle is either brown or black Makata with eight little pins and a bow drill divot in it so that you can use it to hold um, the bow drill rod essentially in place and um, create a fire that way. I opted instead to have this handle um, which is why this is a C model, C for custom um, and this is dark green Makata, a sort of orange natural Makata and then something called Iguana Ducata which is basically a proprietary Makata on the top and I've got mosaic pins with uh, green centers in them. Um, doesn't make any real difference to the knife, just I wanted a different handle and um, since William's a custom knife maker I got a different handle and it's very very comfortable. I often have a problem with knives and that while I've got um, really long fingers um, I don't have the widest of hands and this just fits like a glove, it's remarkably comfortable. So the back of the knife, um, it's got a little swoop in it for thumb placement. Now a lot of people say that you shouldn't have that. I point out the Randall Model 11 that's been around for decades and it has that and it works really well. So the design behind that is that you can get more thumb purchase um, for doing intricate work. Uh, just gives you a little bit more something to push against and control the blade. After the swoop it extends up coming to a high point here where it starts dropping down again. Now the high point is intended for battening, uh, it sort of takes the, the force of the initial blow and you move down to the tip once that's sunken all the way into the wood. It can also be used as a, a hammer point, sort of an anvil point, so you can use it for Hitting, good amount of force can be generated on that point there. It then drops once more, and that is intended for a drop point for a skinning game. So obviously you put that into an old cut, and it'll just run along without the point snagging in. So opening up the animal beautifully along the tip without running the risk of that, digging in and cutting the entrails open or anything else you're trying to get out. The back of the point has actually been slightly reduced 
uh, to aid in piercing. Um, so if you're doing something like drilling, that reduced um, width there aids in that and also poking into an animal's hide to open it up. That helps there. Now they very on the next part from the tip down is essentially what could be described as a tanto point. Um, it's sort of like a chisel point, but chisel points usually are one side flat and um, one side curved. So it's not a pure chisel point, but it is very similar to a tanto point, and that's for strength. The idea behind that point is that it's immensely strong, very powerful, and it enables you to pry and dig into things without it snapping off. Now, where it transitions into this flat section, that's kind of been described as almost another point, and it can be used to dig in, you can see that, to extend something if you're making a bowl, that, that point, five point, false point, can be used to aid in that application. Next we come into a straight section, the idea behind the straight section obviously is you know, most knives have a straight section, it's very useful, great for chopping your vegetables, things like that. Um, I mean, straight section is just used for most of your general purpose cuts. Next we come into this sort of third point that can also be used as a point. Um, and again, for carving out bowls and things, that there gives you a little bit wider to make the bowl deeper again. Then we come in at this drop down section, essentially a recurve. Now this section here acts pretty much like a Scandi. Um, it's designed for fine carving, woodwork, you can also use it for general purpose cutting. Um, but as, as a sort of a Scandi edge, it will just take the wood and either do beautiful, beautiful controlled cuts, or um, you can just use it for hogging in and, and gouging things out. So either you've got your control, and there's just beautiful little feathers coming up, or deep cuts. Now you can also obviously do feathers and things with the section which is just standard flat but doesn't do it with as much control and you can do it again up here and you just put your thumb on the back for control but again it doesn't tend to do it just as finely as this essentially Scandi portion of the blade. Now the back of the blade has a 90 degree spine either for using a ferro rod striking that or you can use it for getting small bits of tinder, scraping bark. I've also found it really useful for peeling vegetables. You just run it along the back and I'll probably give you a demonstration of that later. Just take the skin off a vegetable really easily. Now the width of the blade there is quite wide that's to enable to be used for hitting things so putting stakes or tent pegs or things into the ground or even possibly for breaking things open although you'd be silly not to use either the scraper or extended tang or the, the pivot point on the back of the blade for it. Uh, overall, as I mentioned, we're looking at around five and three quarter inches for that. Um, it's roughly four and a half inches over for the, the handle. Um, obviously, if you don't like the leather uh, sort of lanyard, you can take that out and replace it, or 
not have one at all. Some people don't like them, they claim they get caught in the bush. I think this one works well for what it's intended to do, which is to extend your hand for extra momentum without it flying out of your hand and either getting lost or giving yourself a nasty cut. So yeah, very, very happy with this knife. Um, comes exceptionally sharp out of the box. Now, William puts what he says is a 11 to 12 degree angle the whole way along. So that there is all 11 to 12. It's also got a very pronounced secondary bevel. Now, I measured that at what I thought was around 15 degrees. Um, and this has been sharpened with a diamond stone. So it's got what William calls toothy edge. Um, I'm not sure I like toothy edge. I can see some of the points behind it. I may polish the edge on this, I'm not sure. I will withhold judgment until I need to sharpen it. Now, like I said, I've been using this for uh, four, almost five weeks now. Um, and it's still sharp, so at some point it will need sharpening, but currently it doesn't. So yeah, William Collins WCSK. It's called a survival knife, but it's not essentially a survival knife. It's got the aspect of being able to be used for survival, as well as being the knife that you'd use as an everyday belt knife, a skinning knife, your know, butchering knife, your camp knife, your chopping cooking knife, your firewood prep knife. If you're a soldier you could use this as your as your side knife. Um, definitely a good knife. Uh, not a cheap knife but I believe this one will probably last forever. I think my kids will be getting it, maybe their kids will be getting it when I'm done with it. And it's certainly a knife that I feel comfortable with using and will be using quite some time. William Collins Survival Knife WCSK This is the model serial number 033 C and C is for custom. Normally they come with the B grind. Um, why the B grind? Well William made a whole pile, sent them out to people to test. Um, that was the A grind. People came back and said how about we change this and this. So we sent out the B grind Another set of testing, everyone was happy with that one. So now he calls it the WCSK serial number B. This is C, because it's got the B grind, but a custom handle. Thank you very much. And thank you William for making a great knife, and for Randy Smith for making a great sheath.